So previously we looked at polynomial functions and we were able to tell their degree and their domain and their range and we went through all the other characteristics of, of the function. Now that we know about the factors and the roots and their correlations, we can start to look at these functions and come up with their equations uh, related to their roots. So I'm just going to make one up here. So here's a cubic function and it has a x-intercepts of minus 2, 1, and 1, 2, 3, 4 here. So I could say that the function would look something like this. x plus 2, x minus 1, x minus 4. So minus 2 is a root, so x plus 2 is the factor. 1, x minus 1, 4 is the root, x minus 4 is the factor. Let's look at another cubic one here and let's have it do something like this. So here we have only two different roots, one at negative 2 and one at positive 2. But actually at this negative 2 there's, there's two roots. So when a graph comes up to your x-axis and bounces off it, then, so x minus 2 is the root, so x plus 2 is the factor, and there's actually two of those factors there. So when the graph comes straight across the x-axis like it did in this first example here, there's only one factor at that, at that root. But where it bounces off the x-axis, there will be two of them. And then at this one over here, so at the root of 2, the graph goes straight across the x-axis, so there will only be one factor of x minus 2. And then we could get into a situation like this, where the graph comes up, does a little squiggle through one point. So when it comes up to the x-axis and does a squiggle through it, then there is three roots at that one point. So this graph is really like f of x equals x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2. There's three roots there. And what we call these is we call these points the multiplicity multiplicity of zeros. So where there only comes comes across it at one spot goes straight through, those roots are of a multiplicity of, of, of 0 once. Here are the zeros, that's a multiplicity of 2, because there's two roots right at that spot right there, whereas here, because it crosses the x-axis smoothly, there's only a multiplicity of 1. And here, we've got three equal roots, or three equal factors, so at that location right there, the multiplicity is 3. So let's take a look at this function here. We have f of x equals negative x minus 2 squared x plus 1 x minus 4. And when it's in factored form like this, we can, we can tell a lot of information from, from the graph. It still won't be perfect, but we can do a pretty quick and good sketch with this information. So looking at the degree of the function, well, this is an x squared here, but then it's going to be multiplied by an x, which would make it an x cubed, and then it would be multiplied by another x, which would make it a degree 4. So if we were to multiply all this out, because these are all times, you'd have x times x times x squared, which makes this a degree 4. Now what's the end behavior going to do? We need to look at that leading coefficient that leading coefficient is going to be negative because the x to the 4 would need to be multiplied by the minus 1 that's out here. So the end behavior is that it's going to go down to the right. Now the x-intercepts, well there's two of them here. We have a, we have a uh, multiplicity of 2 on this one. So there'll be a 
two roots at 2, a root at minus 1, just one of them, and a root at 4, one of those. And the y-intercept, we can still find the y-intercept by putting 0 in for x. So this would be 0 minus 2 is minus 2 squared times 0 plus 1 is 1 times 0 minus 4 is minus 4. So negative 2 squared is f positive 4 times negative 4 is negative 16 times 1 is positive 16. So let's go up by 2's here then. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So here's going to be my y-intercept. Assuming we go up by 2's here. Um, so I'm going to go up by 2's on my y-axis and I'm just going to go up by 1's on my x-axis. Um, so I have, an, I have a double x-intercept at 2. So I'm just going to put a dot there and a dot at minus 1 and a dot at 4. And my end behavior, behavior has to go down to the right. So it's going to come down like this. It's going to cross this here. Now I have a double root at 2. So I've got to come back down and bounce off the x-axis. Then my y-intercept's up here. And I've got a single root at 1. So it end up looking something like, something like this here. Let's just check that we've done everything right. Degree four, one, two, three, four. Good. And behaviors down to the right. Yes, we have a double root at two, so it needs to bounce off there at two. Yes. Go through the x-axis at negative one. Yes. And goes through the x-axis at four. Yes. So I have a graph now drawn that meets the criteria that we have in the function here. Let's see what we can say about this polynomial function graphed here. Well, we can say 1, 2, 3, 4, this is negative 5, this is negative 1, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, this is positive 5. So it looks like I have one root at negative 5. So that would be a factor of x plus 5. I have a double root because it's bouncing off the x-axis at minus 1. So that would be a, an x plus 1 squared. And then here I have a triple root because it's doing a little squiggle through the x-axis at 5. So this would be x minus 5 all cubed. And now I need to look at my end behavior. It's clearly going down, so I want to make sure that I have a negative for a leading coefficient. So from a sketch of a graph, from the properties of the roots and the end, behave, end behavior here going down, I can come up with a, with a polynomial function in factored form that would approximate what this sketch of this graph would look like. And now I can answer questions like, what's the degree of the function? Well, I've got x cubed here times x squared and another x. So this would be a degree 6, a polynomial function in degree 6. And um, so you should be able to come up with some of the characteristics and properties of a polynomial function. If I give you the graph, you should be able to come up with the equation. And like we did in this other example, if I give you the equation, you should be able to sketch a graph.